So here's a problem where we're asked to try to find where a function has vertical asymptotes. Uh, and then at each vertical asymptote, we'd like to try to decide if the graph is going to trend toward positive infinity or negative infinity. So when you're looking for vertical asymptotes, what must happen at the location of one is your function must be undefined. So before you can identify what limits to check in order to confirm that you have an asymptote at this location or you don't, is you have to identify those candidates. So the candidates are always going to be where the function is undefined. And so this is pretty typical of a lot of the problems that ask you to identify where you have vertical asymptotes because what you have is you have division and the denominator of this function being zero is going to cause the overall function to become undefined. So when you set this denominator equal to zero, what you can do is you can solve that by factoring. So I factored the left hand side of this and I got two solutions. I got that x being negative six makes this zero and then x being three makes this zero. So the two solutions uh, for making the denominator zero and thus the two x's that make the function undefined are negative six and three. So in order to judge whether or not you have an asymptote at these spots, you check limits as you approach them. So I'm starting over here by checking the limit as I approach negative six. So if I put negative six in place of this x in the numerator. I end up with zero in the numerator and we already know we're gonna get zero in the denominator. So I end up with zero over zero. Now zero over zero is an indeterminate form. And what it's going to signal is that you've got to do some sort of algebra to eventually get something to cancel. And so what I can't do is I can't cancel this X and this X. I can't do that because I'd be reaching into sets of parentheses that really exist, although they're not drawn in around the numerator and the denominator of this fraction. So doing the cancellation that I just suggested would be a direct violation of the order of operations since I'm going into that set of parentheses to do the division. But if you get the numerator and the denominator both expressed as factored forms, you can cancel common factors. So the numerator doesn't really factor at all. I just kind of put a set of parentheses around it, but we already factored the denominator. The denominator was factored back here whenever we solved that equation to identify what x's we were going to have to analyze a little bit more closely. When I see this matching factor of x plus 6 in the numerator and the denominator, whenever this is multiplication, I'm not going into the parentheses to do the cancellation. So I do have the green light to go ahead and cancel the x plus 6 from the numerator with the x plus 6 from the denominator. Now one thing that I've seen happen from time to time is, is not recognizing what you're actually left with in the top of the fraction when everything leaves it. You're left with a 1 to hold the place of that numerator and now if you put negative 6 in place of the x that's in the denominator what you end up with is you end up with 1 over negative 9. So you end up with negative 1 9th. What this tells us is this tells us that we do not have a situation where our graph is moving up or down off the coordinate plane. When we get near negative six, we're going to have an undefined location. So there's not going to be a point on the graph at the X of negative six, but there is going to be a hole poked out of the graph at the Y value of negative one ninth. So all of this, I've kind of written what I just kind of mentioned verbally a few seconds ago down here. Although we're undefined at negative six, the limit as we approach negative six is negative one ninth. This graph has a hole in it, which is a lot of the times referred to as a removable discontinuity. At negative six comma negative one ninth, but not a vertical asymptote. Now, if you look over here in what I have in, at what I have in pink, the other location that is under consideration by us is the x value of three. So if I check the limit as I approach three, what I end up with is I end up with something that's not indeterminate, this is indeterminate. Over here, nine divided by zero is undefined. An undefined form is gonna give you an answer of infinity or negative infinity, but the only way that you're gonna be able to decide which you get is if you carefully consider the, the sides of the value you're approaching. So we want to approach three from the bigger side. We also want to approach three from the smaller side, try to see if we can figure out what's going on. So as we calculate these limits, what we're really doing is we're, we're doing the second task. We're trying to see if our graph is going to positive infinity or negative infinity on each side of three. So as I approach three from the bigger side, I put three here, add six, I get nine. I don't care if this is a 9.1 or an 8.9 in the numerator. What I need to be sure about within this numerator is that I'm positive. 
I also put three, I didn't go to the unfactored form of the denominator that is showing right here. I actually plugged three into the factored form of the denominator. So when I put three here, three plus six once again is nine. Again, I don't care if that's 9.1 or 8.9, both of those numbers are positive. Now what I have to be really careful about is when I put three here, three minus three is zero. So what I had to analyze a little bit more closely was because I'm approaching three from the bigger side, a number like 3.1 goes here, I subtract three from it, I end up slightly above zero. This is the most crucial aspect of this little analysis that we're doing right now, because now if we do nine times zero, I get zero, but if it's a positive times a positive, the answer stays positive. And if I take this positive number and I divide by another positive number, my answer is positive. And that's what tells us on the bigger side of three, our y value tends to positive infinity. So our graph is going up off the coordinate plane for values of x slightly above three. And then if we go through a similar process for values slightly below three, again, we don't care if these nines in these positions are, are 9.1s or 8.9s. We care that they're positive. Be more careful with that zero that pops up in the denominator. So when I put three here, three minus three is zero, but slightly smaller than three, a number like 2.9 minus three pushes us on the underside of zero. Now, if I do the math in the denominator, 9 times 0 is 0, but a positive times a negative is a negative, and then a positive divided by a negative gives me a negative answer. So we've now confirmed that our graph is going down off the coordinate plane on the smaller side of 3. Because we go up and or down off the coordinate plane on either side of that x, we do have a vertical asymptote at that x, and we've already accomplished that second goal that we had. We've determined that we go up off the coordinate plane to positive infinity on the bigger side of three, and we go down off the coordinate plane toward negative infinity on the smaller side of three.